another edition of Toys from the Attic, uh, where it's still Predator Month. Um, today we're going to be taking a look at the Cracked Tusk Predator. So without further ado, let's take a closer look at this guy. Okay, so here we have the Cracked Tusk Predator, named so for one of his damaged spikes on his face. Now I actually didn't own this guy growing up, rather it belonged to my older cousin and was given to me once he grew out of action figures. So I do remember playing with him. Now to be honest with you, this Predator is probably my least favorite. That doesn't mean I necessarily don't like him. I always just love having a new Predator to add to the roster. He was just normally one of the ones I would play with the least. On the back of the boxes with these guys, the only story we would get is that they had a long time war with the aliens. And that was about it. They never came with individual personality traits or anything else like that, so you were pretty much get free to choose whatever background story you wanted or make up your own characters, which actually freed up the imagination. Because of this guy's battle damage and his uh, rather thin frame, I always considered him one of the elders of the Predator line, and thus that's what I usually had him play as, the wise mentor who would uh, often go on hunts with the younger guys and give them advice as they were hunting. Alright, so here we have a closer look at the Crack Test Predator. Um, now, here's pretty much all the details that go on this guy. Um, he has this, your standard five points of articulation, one with the arms, the legs, and... The head, oh man, I haven't played with these guys for a while, so the head's a little bit stiff. Um, sad to say, one of my other ones I was just looking at, the head broke off and another leg broke off of another uh, set in these guys, but we'll probably get to them later. Um, now, the arm is, this arm has uh, another point of articulation, but it's a little limited by his um, actual, well, I would say it's his gimmick, but also his main weapon. Um, his uh, The main thing about this guy, he has this really big shoulder mounted cannon, it's one that can kind of just fold up off to the side like this and just rotate it up like this and pull it out like this. Um, now it originally had a missile but for the life of me I could not find that thing so I apologize so I can't actually show you how far the missile actually shoots out and let me uh, adjust the camera so you can get a better look at this. Uh, but still there's like a lot of nice detailing on this weapon. It really gives you the feel of one of those predator weapons where it's just all those ridges and bumps and everything else and I actually kind of like the fact that it folds up like this so um, I'm usually not a big, f well, I'm not a big fan of most gimmicks that actually get attached to the toy. But here's the neat thing about this. This actual shoulder piece can be popped off. So if you don't like that and you want the guy to be just kind of regular or without anything, there you go. So it's, it doesn't really hinder the toy as much, but still it's kind of cool. Um, one thing I kind of, uh, um, oh, I guess not. I thought I noticed something. Um, shows you something new every day. I thought this was actually a t-shirt, which is something I always thought was kind of weird. How, why would he have like this uh, tiger stripe t-shirt on and the predators don't wear that. And it wasn't until just now when I'm actually reviewing them that I see that the paint kind of fades off, so it's probably just some sort of body paint. Um, and only right here is where it doesn't continue on, but that's okay. Um, you can kind of see the sculpt in here, how it's a little, how the muscles are really defined. It looks like the skin's really hugging to them or he almost doesn't have any skin at all. Uh, this is kind of what, and just because of how thin he is, this is what kind of gave me the feel that he was kind of like an elder guy. Um, I don't know if anyone else out there had these guys and if they had their own stories or particularly like this guy, but that's the stories I used to come up with when I was playing with him. Now, um, his face mask here actually pops off just like the others, and I have to say that, um, well, first off, I'm going to say that this isn't actually his original face mask. Uh, they really later came out with another guy who was a repaint of this guy, or a remold, that was completely red, and we'll get to him in another time, but uh, that this is the face mask that goes with this guy, but uh, his face mask originally had the same silver color gray, yet it looked exactly the same. Um, sadly, I wasn't able to find the gray one in all my toys, but uh, so I decided to just take the red one. It, you don't really know. It kind of fits pretty good, but um, if you guys are looking out for these guys, it's the silver face mask that looks just like this that you want to go with. Anyways, the head pops off, and you can kind of, hopefully you could see all that detail in, in there, which I always thought was nice, because it was a nice negative that always um, made these masks stick pretty, pretty well to the face, so unless you actually took the masks off, like I did, that's when you can actually lose them, but if you stuck them on there, they're they actually stuck pretty good. Um, okay, so here we take a look at the Predator's face. And now he has this nice yelling motion, and he actually has some... His spikes, his facial spikes, are way bigger than any other Predator I've, you see in the movies or any other Predator in the line. I think there might be one other who has them that big, but 
as you can see, because of his name, one of them is broken off. So this is, like I said, this is also another way, reason why I thought he was an elder. Because if if these if if like they're like other animals and other stuff or creatures that the tusks keep on growing with age, you you would have to be pretty darn old for these things to be growing out. And, and he had to have seen some pretty lo a lot of fights if one of them broke off. But still, um, this guy is actually a pretty neat thing. Um, his claw, however, um, I was. I really like it when they actually have the claws on their hands because it gives them more of another weapon in case you in case you don't have this with them or you don't have any other guns or the other accessories that they have. You have really the other standard physical weapon that they could just attack you guys with. I mean, because these guys were big, they were strong, and they had that claws that could always get you. Um, this claw, however, always looks a little weird to me just because it kind of comes out and it's really big and wider than most of the other claws. Normally, they're kind of a little bit more farther in or they go out a lot further, which we'll look at at the next guy we're going to review. Well, anyways, this has been a look at the Crack Tusk Predator. Um, still pretty a neat guy, and one of the actual predators that was first in the first line, or one of the first line of guys that was, or one of the first waves of guys, I should say. <laughs> I'm not being able to talk right now, uh, in the Predator versus Alien line. So if you like this guy and you like what you see, try to snag him up. Once again, thank you for watching. If you like what you've seen today, please feel free to subscribe or leave a comment below in the comment section. Any advice for the show will be greatly appreciated. Who knows, something to suggest may appear on the show in the future. Next week we'll be taking a look at another brother.